myself together Put on a new face Paul Phoenix has been around since the very beginning of Tekken and his moveless and style have evolved. According to Tekken lore, a young kid by the name of Paul would be inspired by a larger than life Chukushin Karateka, Willie Bear Killer Williams. It may also be the source of his aversion to bears. Either way, he would make his way through life mastering judo and becoming a rival to Kazuya. During his journey, he would train closely with Li Shaolan and the Law family. And even though Tekken has turned him into a money hungry meathead, he is still a martial art genius of the Chinese principle of Fa Qin and the Japanese principle of Aiki. For example, his push away technique combines the Geiden Ate of Aikido with the Baiji Chuan throw. In this video, we will compare Paul Phoenix to five other characters from five other fighting games. We'll look at their techniques and see how well he stacks up against them and see who truly represents Kudo. We'll also look at some possible improvements to his current move list or even some possible additions in the form of new moves. I am the Unknown Fang. <laughs> Literally translated as a gentle way. In judo, there is a gentleman's rule of protecting your training partner when throwing them. Imagine your training partner as a sociopath with blue hair, ash-colored skin, and a sadistic mean streak. Go Hinogami fights with his jacket wide open, and of course this means that he does not have any concerns for rules or traditions. He just wants to inflict as much pain as possible. In fact, he actually seems more driven to beat and throw his opponent to the ground until they are six feet under it. While his strikes are not as polished as Paul, he is an extremely talented judoka. Now, and I'm knocking out whoever fucking comes my way, man. My mind is fucking blank. My mind is fucking blank, man. It's fucking blank. You know that guy that goes to a Muay Thai or boxing class for a few weeks and feels like he can take out the master? Well, that guy is your Dan Hibiki in real life. Dan Hibiki's introduction came during the Alpha series as a Ro Sakazaki parody, who many felt was a carbon copy of Street Fighter 1's Ryu. Maybe it was the one-armed fireballs. Dan's backstory is no joke. After losing his father to the god of Muay Thai, Dan sought training from the benevolent teacher Goken. This didn't amount to much as he was expelled after his true intentions of revenge began to surface as he trained. Dan was still able to salvage some of that training and combined it with his own unique blend of Muay Thai and possibly Kyokushin. However, he's a bit of a pushover and the perfect fable of wasted potential and the consequences of being self-taught. While he was never meant to grow beyond being a joke character, his pink gi possibly a reference to the real-life judoka Jean LaBelle and massive strength show some parallels to Paul. Grapplers in 2D brawlers have always been a little slower. Mike Hager, Max Thunder, Buzz, and Zangief are all heavy hitters who are a little on the slow side. Goro is no different. At 6 foot 8, inches tall and 225 pounds. He is slower, but he makes up for it with powerful grappling moves. In King of Fighters, he is part of a three-man Japan team, gifted with the power to generate seismic vibrations. He is joined by two masters of fire and electricity. With this supernatural ability to manipulate the earth, he is easily the most powerful judoka on this list. Since his intro in Mortal Kombat 2, Jax has always been a tank. The Green Beret was well known for his massive strength and grappling, his gotcha grab, and multiple slams showed skill of an impressive grappler. By the time Deadly Alliance was released, six previous Mortal Kombat games were already out. 
but with few exceptions, there wasn't a strong emphasis on real-world martial arts. Deadly Alliance changed all that, and finally Jax's fighting style was revealed as a combination of Muay Thai and Judo. Now Kudo is all about combinations, and it will be interesting to see how Paul's techniques stack up against the deadliest fighter on this list. Yeah, these motherfuckers work. Rounding on our list is Yoko Kano. Yoko Kano is actually a pastiche of real world judoka Yoko Tani. Now, Tani was extremely talented and well known for winning five Olympic medals and coming out on top in numerous championships. The character Yoko Kano has her mind set on one thing to show the world the power of judo. And one thing that really sets her apart from the roster is her ability to throw a character so quickly that they literally catch fire. First up is the Ippon Seonage. This shoulder throw was previously explored in the last video, and specifically it is a variation of the Seonage, with the key difference being the placement of the supporting arm. Again, we can see that Paul has a pretty standard approach to it. The Kazushi and 180 degree turn are all present, showing a picture perfect Ippon Seonage. Go's technique is a little different from Paul's, as he closely follows the jujitsu traditions of using strikes to knock his opponent off balance before delivering a throw. Go delivers two strikes to his opponent's stomach. After a stun from the second one, he grabs and finishes them with an Ippon Seonage. Against the wall, Go traps both arms and uses a front thrust kick. After your opponent bounces from the wall, Go grabs and slams them directly to the ground. After pulling his opponent to his feet and delivering a headbutt, Go gives him a picture perfect sail nage. You can see his sociopathic nature manifest by how hard he throws his opponent to the ground. With Goro, it's pretty textbook with all the common elements. Breaking balance, securing the arms, 180 degree turn, rapid slam to the ground. Then things get a little cartoony when he tosses his opponent into orbit. This judoka comes with three versions. The first version is more like a morote seonage that continues into a forward roll. The second is an air throw. And then things get a little wacky. Dan's Ippon Seonage has evolved into a more comical version. During his debut in Street Fighter Alpha, it was virtually the same as Ryu or Ken's but it would change in Street Fighter 4 when more of Dan's personality was added to his techniques. He fails his first attempt and then muscles his way through the technique. Personally, I love Go's versatility. For Paul, it's a thrill that he's carried since his Tekken 1 days. Jax doesn't use this technique and Dan's is pretty comical. While Goro and Roko are over the top in terms of damage, I love the motion capture animations that Sega put together when creating Go. This outside leg reap is another staple move in Judo. The goal is to turn your opponent into a tree and chop that leg down. It is quite intuitive as you will find this technique in many other disciplines. For Paul, once again, he has a standard approach to it pushing forward while reaping the supportive leg of his opponent. For Go Hinogami, this appears to be one of his favorite techniques and he has several ways to apply it. First up, this is his basic technique from a regular grab. Here we see Go use the principle of a clinch setup in the form of a Tsukami stance. He uses Tsukami after a successful group of attack, quite similar to Ganyu's own Kinte Tsukami. From Tsukami, Go is able to unbalance his opponent for a much more realistic throw animation. Go again sets his throw up with an attack. Now it's much more offensive ending with both fighters on the ground. 
This is Goro Daimon's starter for some devastating throw combinations. He uses this move to begin a chain of throws that would leave every bone in the average person's body broken beyond repair. So Dan actually has his own version of the Ochi Gari. And now we end with Ryoko. She has an amazing super. Once her opponent is swept, she leaps into the air with them, going into a series of forward somersaults. The somersaults continue building up centripetal force, fatally slamming her opponent into the ground. Sometimes this force is so great that her opponent literally catches fire. While it's a great side throw for Paul, Go really shines in the different ways that he can apply this technique. Now I do love Ryoko's flashiness, but she suffers in terms of realism. No one walking this earth has the ability to reap someone's leg so hard that they rise into the air and catch fire. Well, no one besides quantum jujitsu fighter Jeremy Corbell. As you can imagine, I have to give Go the most credit for this technique. Paul's throw is legit, but Go has numerous ways to deliver that technique beyond a simple clinch. Paul seizes his opponent and while rolling back, tosses him head over heels. This actually isn't as accurate with the actual technique being much more flexible and allowing for different follow-ups. Go Hinogami clearly uses Kazushi to pull and once his opponent is off balance, he maintains contact by rolling into a mount position and delivering three lefts and a right. Now this is far more aggressive but it's also much more accurate. Sadly enough, Jax once again does not have a Tomoe Nage in his arsenal. Instead he has a Tawada Gaeshi, which ends in quite a similar way. The opponent flies over Jax and there's really not any room left for a follow up attack. While his Shoto brothers, Ken and Ryu, have their own versions of a Tomoe Nage, Dan doesn't have any. Ryoko Kano does a textbook Tomoe Nage and then positions herself into a Kami Shiho Gatame or north south position and continues to attack with a submission. And I honestly don't know but it could be a suffocating choke. The Ude Hishiki Juji Katame or armbar is a quite flexible joint lock that can be performed from a variety of different positions such as the mount, guard, back control, omiplata or even jumping. After a tackle, Paul Phoenix mounts his opponent and executes a textbook armbar. He also has the ability to achieve an armbar as a counter from a ground and pound. Keeping with this proficiency in judo, Go has a few ways to get his opponent into an armbar position. First, he connects with a hook kick and brings his weight down on that kicking leg, knocking his opponent forward and ending up in an armbar. Another way is attacking his opponent while they're on the ground in a prone or supine position. The rest of the cast does not have any semblance of an armbar. Goal has several ways to get into an armbar and once again I do love his versatility. But I have to give Paul the credit because of his ability to use this from a mount as well as a mounted position. Whether from Karate or Muay Thai, this jumping knee closes the distance adding the weight of the body behind the attack. Paul Phoenix's Mountain Rise is a powerful attack that takes out ducking opponents and it's quite realistic as Paul's jumping height isn't too high. He also covers a lot of distance and the damage from his knee is devastating. Now Go does have a few knees but none of the jumping variety and Jax falls into that category as well. Go does have a few generic ones but they're really nothing to write home about. Now Dan, instead of the spinning tornado kick of Ryu, Ken, Akuma, Sakura, and Gai, he actually has the weakest form of his kick. This weakest iteration is actually part of a series of three attacks, starting with a flying knee and ending with two roundhouses. Ryoko also doesn't have any knees. In rating the knee, it's obvious that Paul Phoenix has the best jumping knee out there. In fact, he has the only jumping knee. While Jackson, Go do have excellent power. 
Pulse is obviously the closest to a jumping name found in Kudo. There are different ways to do a roundhouse, high, low, or mid. The attacker also has the option of pulling back with a snap or following through with his hip. Now the general consensus is snap roundhouses are geared towards speed, while roundhouses thrown from the hip are more designed for power. Paul actually has both types of roundhouses in this moveset. Now Go is also able to deliver a few high and low kicks as well, but they're not aesthetically pleasing. Jax actually does have a roundhouse, and Go has one as well. Now Dan has a roundhouse in the form of a psycho kick. This version does have a beautiful roundhouse, but perhaps it's a little bit too high, maybe designed for hitting Saibet. I mean, let's face it, he is 7 foot 4. And overall, Go does have roundhouses, but I'm going to go with Pulse because they look much more powerful and their technique looks more refined. Finally, let's explore some possible additions to Paul's movesets. These moves can be new or changes to his current moves such as outdated animations. Think Eddie Gordo's flares. They really don't fit the flow of Capoeira and are better for a gymnastics floor routine. Now these could have easily been replaced by a corta capin. Now these are just my opinions. The primary reason is more about the aesthetics and accuracy that pays tribute to his kudo background. I'm also looking for something that matches Paul's 50-50 hard hitting style, as well as his ability to go to the ground for a submission. Let's start with this 2 plus 4 throw. Now I tried to support this move in a previous video, but to be honest, it looks like he started a jumping armbar and then gave up. Why not update it by turning it into an armbar after an impressive slam? Paul is well known for his strength, and a dynamic slam into a proper armbar would be a really nice update to his move list. His Tomoe Nage also needs to be reworked, and I think it would be a great transition into a close guard. Traditionally, a lot of judoka prefer to transition in from a Tomoe Nage into a mount. In fact, we've already seen this from Gohinogami's version. I think it is more than possible with a little innovation to transition into a close guard from the Tomoe Nage. Much like Marduk's mount that threw a tackle, Paul could have access to at least four different submissions. In my opinion, this transition into a close guard would be a great geometric grappling style to Marduk's mount mix-up. I would also rework his ultimate punishment. It is a really cool option from Paul's mount attacks, but I think the animation needs a much needed update. It's a bit jerky, and I think that once he has his opponent's back, finishing him off with something like a crucifix would be a nice innovation. After he rolls on top of them, he goes in for the submission. It's quite rare because of the difficulty, but it's also really cool. And finally, in terms of grappling, I would give him a right punch reversal that branched into another set of ground techniques. This move by Sensei Corbell is a dynamic, flashy, and most importantly ends up on the ground. Overall, Paul's interpretation of these real-life techniques are about the same. His judo techniques are good, but they are outshined by an actual judoka. His striking is much more refined and less wild, reminiscent back to karate days. And the 2D characters are much more entertaining, but overall, unrealistic. And this puts an end to Paul Phoenix and the Kudo Saga. It was really nice comparing Paul to other characters out there in the fighting game universe. You also saw some suggestions for updates and additions to Paul's moveset. Now if you're curious and you would like to learn more about judo, then I recommend Chidi's YouTube channel as well as the official Kodokan channel. 
Budgie Freak is a great resource for Baiji Twin, but you probably want to learn more about Kudo, and I recommend Kudoista and the official Kudo International Federation channel. Next up, we'll have a look at a kickboxing art from Southeast Asia with roots in Eskrima Jiu Jitsu and other indigenous arts. Thank you so much for watching this video. God bless and Feng Wei. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. Where is my mind? About that, with just in terms of inflation, because you had told uh, us at a town hall, I think it was in July, that the. In, it's